Hi, my name is Blake Kinsey, former Formula 1 performance engineer, and I'm here for my first Rolex 24 at Daytona. I've spent my entire career working with race car data, and over the last two years, I've been deep diving into analytical topics about Formula One. But this year, I decided it was time to dig into the world of sports car racing. So, Bosch Motorsport invited me out to the Rolex 24 to understand how data is changing the world of sports car racing. So the thing about Daytona is the speed. You've got the high speed oval, you've got to have the cars completely trimmed out, make all the compromises as well for the infield. So as a team, you've got to be way on top of the setup. As the officiating body or as IMSA, you have to be on top of scrutineering and making sure everybody's complying with the regulations. And as a driver at these kind of speeds and performance levels, you've got to be absolutely locked in. So I think the first question I've got is somebody personally new to sports car racing, and you're telling me you're going to sell it to me. Why should I be excited about sports cars? Uh, I mean, it's sports car racing, this is the thing. So first and foremost, it's racing. And I love all types of racing, single seat stuff, stock car, rallying. And I guess a little bit with sports car stuff, you know, it's not just one group of cars that all looks the same. The unique thing about our sport is we have multi-classes on the track, so it would almost be like having Formula 1, Formula 2, and Formula 3 on the track at the same time. So when the race is going on, there's actually three races going on at the same time. And in the prototype class, you're going to be flying by GT guys. I mean, we do races that are 100 minutes long, that are sprint races that are intense at Long Beach or 24 hours like we have here at Daytona. You're never out of traffic, whether you're in a GTP, LMP, or a GT car. You, there's always something going on. You never have a clear lap. And I think that's what's so cool for the drivers. You know, it's 24 hours of just mayhem. But also for the fans because and the spectators, because there's always something happening. It's an interesting journey. And then the cars, you know, we get to drive different cars, different manufacturers. As a sports car driver, we're not sort of locked in like Formula One where you get stuck in the same manufacturer for, for 10 or 15 years. We can sort of jump around and it's quite a cool journey just to see everyone has a different approach to their racing and what they do. And it's quite interesting that often so different, but they arrive at the same result. If you take GTP, for example, the cars are all built to a similar set of regulations, but they all sound different, they all look different. That's awesome. Like, what, what's your experience now in, in the GTP class and how complex the cars are? So the new GTP, it's brand new class to sports car racing. The most highly technological, fastest sports cars we've ever had racing in, in IMSA. So, you know, there's an ever evolving development in sports cars. Yeah. So it's not just what's going on on track. And that's something that the teams and the drivers get involved with. And is that exciting for you to be a part of that process? It is fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge, the technical challenge, as much as the actual sporting challenge on track. I mean, I think all the drivers to an extent have to be a bit nerdy now. Like, you have to be involved with the hybrid systems and the regen, the deploy, how it's affecting the diff is massive in these cars. Uh, but even the, the guys that are from a generation where they didn't have all those tools, they're learning it, you know, they're getting involved because they have to. From an engineering perspective, you're going to hear four different bits of feedback and four different driving styles and guys who want four different race cars. It's a lot to learn and adjust to. You can definitely drive the path very much the wrong way, so you need to be careful with what you say. From the driver perspective, you always just give your point of view, but it's up to the engineer to kind of figure out that compromise. How you go about working with your crew and your team to get the most out of that is just as important as steering the thing and pressing your two pedals driving around the track. One of the cool things we talk about the complexity of these new GTP cars is the electric braking system that you've got. One of the, yeah. one of the pieces of Bosch hardware that's standard to all the GTP cars. How do you feel about that and that as a, a tool that you get to play with? Well, this is it. It is a tool because we've obviously got this hybrid system that is working mainly for the forward propulsion of the, the vehicle, you know, to gain us efficiency, to gain us power but it also acts in reverse. So under braking, this is where we generate, regenerate the electricity and it creates a braking effect on the car. So, and you can mix how much of the hybrid system is actually decelerating the car, yeah. plus how much the actual hydraulic system and the carbon brakes are. So, and, and actually how you set the car up for a corner under braking is in any sort of motorsport, braking is a massive, massive aspect because it's, it's the first thing you do that sets up the whole of the corner. That's, it's where you find or lose the lap time and more often it you is. lose it. Yeah to finally hit the brakes in the correct way, in the correct point, is the hardest thing in, in driving. So then how you set the brake system up around this and all the electronics around having these systems help you, um, it's a big part of GTP. 
When you walk through the paddock, it's pretty obvious that Bosch have a huge presence here. And if you think about it, it completely makes sense that Bosch is working with IMSA because Bosch is already working with all the manufacturers on their road cars. So now we're taking a lot of this technology, expanding on it and integrating that into IMSA's system to make the series what it is today. In the past, one of the most difficult things that racing organizations faced was there was no standardized, consistent, high-quality data to measure car performance. And that's where Bosch comes in. Whether you've got the super high-tech LMDH car or the road-derived GT3 cars, Bosch is kind of at the center of everything across sensors, loggers, and even control systems. Having the same supplier in these critical data systems makes it possible not only for all these cars to race on a fair playing field in IMSA, but also across the world in the World Endurance Championship and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. How would you explain what Bosch is doing with IMSA in not only the GTP class or the prototype class, but also your GTD or your, your GT sports cars? How are you top level what you guys are doing here at IMSA? Just like everything these days, like most people, like electronics are a part of your life, right? Yes. And it's super integrated. When I explain to people, what does Bosch do in racing? You know how a computer is essential to your life, yes. um, so it is to the race car. Yes. From the computer, you have to have all the sensing elements to be able to determine like, okay, what are the calculations that I want to do in order to make a decision? That's essentially uh, what's going on inside the race car, but at a much more detailed level, yeah. there's a, a team working in multiple different disciplines in order to get that data so that stakeholders such as IMSA can make decisions in order to make the entertainment on track as exciting as possible, but at the same time, for the OEMs, that's another big stakeholder that they feel like they have a chance, that there's a parity there. We've got IMSA as the officiating body who look after the regulations, the performance levels and targets of the cars, and you've got the manufacturers who say, I'd like to bring my cars to get to the race, and you've got the fan point of view, where, where I mean, these races, six, 12, 24 hours, coming down to the last lap, and that's something I don't think is possible to achieve without what you guys are doing now. Not to mention the manufacturers also have different chassis manufacturers. Yes. <laughs> Not to mention that you have multiple race teams running a given combination of you know, engine and, and chassis as well. It wouldn't be fair to say that Bosch did everything because that's not the truth. And I think that's yeah, you also- have to, you, have to, you have to have a good synergy and collaboration with exactly, the teams. Exactly, exactly. And that's the, the word, collaboration. We had to sit there from the onset with multiple different partners, whether it be obviously the race series, um, the ACO, meaning the WEC, and then IMSA here on the state side, x on the Gearbox side, and WAE on, from the high voltage battery side. The amount of collaboration that had to happen um, in order for this formula to be pulled off last year, one year ago at this racetrack, was amazing. And I don't think that people understood that um, at that time. And that's really one of the, like, the hidden gems of this storyline is the amount of collaboration, is that the people that normally hold all the secrets and all the information tight to your chest. You have to play with your cards down to exactly. some extent. In order to drive the formula forward, in order to have a better product on track. How technically advanced are these GTP cars? So they've got these hybrid systems, they've got the electric braking systems, which Formula One had that technology in 2014, but they're not doing events like 24 hours of Rolex or the Le Mans 24. And on top of that, we've got this integration of this Bosch unit with all sorts of different power units from different manufacturers. And that's super interesting because all these engines have completely different characteristics and they've had to dial these systems in to perform across all of these different platforms and last for over 24 hours. Talk to me about how complex these new hybrid power units are on these cars. Is that part of the teething issues that you had with the new platform? Oh, it definitely was. I mean, it's incredibly complex, the, the whole thing. It's also complex, not only technically for an individual unit, it's also complex because many, many different people and companies and even OEMs are talking to each other. And there was a really good relationship we had from the beginning on. We were talking to each other. We had the problems open on the table and, and uh, that was something which helped the thing and uh, that we, we, we came so fast, basically, to, to, a, to a good result. Isn't it? As I say, there's way more sensors on the car than ever before. The data can be used in multiple ways, as you say. It's, uh, there's the monitoring for reliability, whether it's simple temperatures, and making sure that the various things, whether it's the hybrid unit, the engine, the gearbox, all that stuff is working within its operational range. 
or if there's a parameter that's fallen away and needs maintenance or is looking like something's in, not behaving as it should do. So that's the, the reliability side and then obviously there's the, the performance side as well, whether it's through the drivetrain or all the chassis stuff. So, As companies, big OEMs like, like Bosch, talking to car manufacturers, it is becoming complicated because these guys are used to separate the developments in between. And, and uh, But that, that came on really good. At the end of the day, this is entertainment for everybody. For, for us, it's our passion, it's motorsport. But for everybody else, this is, this is entertainment. Has that translated well to, to good, fair racing? I'm sure this is translated very well to the fans as well. And then, as you can see, the big crowd we are here in the roar was already packed. I've, I've been told, unfortunately, I have not been here so many years before, but I've been told the crowd in the roar was as big as never. And, and uh, I guess they all get it with the hybrid, with Bosch and all these things. So that would be cool. It's awesome. Well, I think in terms of endurance sports car racing, our segment is at perhaps its platinum level. A lot of people talk about the GTP era in the 80s and 90s as being the golden era. Mm -hmm. I honestly think we're in the platinum era. So you should pass that. 100%. I think from a fan standpoint, we have a very, very open paddock. We have a completely open grid walk, yeah. such that families, little children can come up, see the cars, see the teams working up close with really no restriction. I can come, I can walk, I can talk to mechanics. I see all sorts of drivers that I've, I say, I know that guy. It's, it's honestly for me, it's shocking how open it is in, in, a, in the best way possible. Well, and with 18 total auto manufacturers, they want that. They're here to, of course, compete on track, but tell their brand story or tell their nameplate story or tell their powertrain story. And so it's our responsibility as the series to create a level playing field so that all those different platforms, which is great variety, can have that chance at the end of the, the, the race, at the end of 24 hours, at the end of 100 minutes, no matter which it is. They know their cars better than anyone. Sure. To work with us, to work with each other, to in the end, create the best, most exciting show for our fans, whether they're here at the track or watching on television. So one of the really cool things about this is they've brought the whole world together. You look around and you see WEC people here, if you're at Le Mans 24, you see IMSA people there, and everybody's working together to make this common regulation set. So you can have these cars that are racing in IMSA, they can go over to Europe and all across the world and race in the World Endurance Championship at iconic events like the 24 Hours of the Mall. It's a completely different ballgame here in sports car racing. In the next episode, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into what is IMSA and what is sports car racing. And then we'll get up close with some of the systems, hardware, and processes that make everything possible.